What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to day 78 of Autodesk Fusion. Today, what I'm making, <clears throat> or at least try to make, is a workable clamp. Now, this, for some reason, I've had a lot of issues on figuring out how to work. this works. So I'm going to build the clamp from scratch and then use a cylindrical joint constraint that allows me to have a slider constraint and a revolution uh, bundled together. So if you want to, you can skip ahead in this video where I actually have the both pieces made and then you can uh, go from there or you can follow along making all those pieces. So the first thing I'm going to do is create my rectangular body for both uh, the inside and outside of my clamp. So let's go ahead and just pick that out. Let's do an extrusion of an inch seems a little big. So let's do three quarters of an inch and we're looking okay. You can spend your time making a really fancy clamp or if you're reverse engineering or we're doing something from, you can spend more time on that clamp body, but um, this works pretty well. I am gonna try to do a hole right here. And so the problem is with these holes is that you have a hard time figuring out where they're going and getting them to constrain kind of as you need to. So I really don't use that too much. Instead, what I'm gonna do is sketch a circle to have a thickness of 3 8 And then I just find this easier than trying to use holes just because um, that's 0 0.75 divided by two, just because it's a lot easier to do geometric constraints. Okay. We're going to go ahead and extrude that inwards, make it a cut, and we're looking okay. Next we're going to do is we're going to create a thread for the inside of this right here. Now, what I'm going to do is select model, and it actually brings some true threads into our 3D geometry right here. If it's not selected, it's a texture. It's just a smooth surface. It's made to look like threads, but it's not true threads. One thing I do want you to take notice of is if you're in standard, notice if you're coarse or fine threads, that determines what, uh, so you do something downstream on your joint constraints. So I'm gonna use 3 8 uh UNC, which means there are 16 threads per inch. We're gonna click okay on that, and that looks okay. Next thing I'm gonna do is, let's go ahead and create this as a new component. So from the bodies, create a new component, and we're gonna call this just body. Right click, and we're gonna go ahead and ground that. That way, this just doesn't move on me at all. And then we're looking good. So I'm gonna go ahead and now measure, how long did this body is? This? That is five inches, okay. So I'm gonna make go ahead and deactivate that body and then go ahead and create my axle, which is gonna have a diameter of 3 8 And we're gonna go ahead and extrude this out to be, uh, let's do five inches. Create that as a new component. And we're just gonna call this um, axle. All right. Like the inside of that hole, we're going to create threads on the outside of this axle. We're gonna go ahead and make those modeled as well. 3 8 UNC, everything looks okay. Let's go ahead while we're at it and we're here, let's make a handle for our clamp. And that looks about right. Let's go ahead and just do a half inch while we're at it. Make that a join constraint. That way um, it is all together in one piece. What I'm going to do next is going to go ahead and activate this body. And now we're going to do is we're going to do a joint constraint between this axle right here and this body. But we want it, I would prefer to select, don't do the threads because there's way too many options. Instead, select the center of this face to be the center of this hole. 
if you run into a little bit of a problem, if I try to click on those little crosshairs, they disappear. Hold control down on your keyboard, and this keeps this face selected and allows you to select right on that center right there. The motion we're going to do here in our joint is going to be a cylindrical constraint. So it could be rigid, might be what it does by default. We're going to do a cylindrical constraint, which is really just a revolute and a slider constraint bundled together into one. We notice that it's going the opposite direction, so I'm going to go ahead and flip that and get that animation looking okay. This looks all right so far. The only thing is that um, I imagine some people are going to be like, well, there's two things. One, it's way too far left, and then two, it's spinning not at the rate it should be. As long as on your joint you're getting the motion correct, you can always edit those later. So I'm going to go ahead and just get this motion correct first. I'm making the edits now. And then we're going to click OK. And that looks all right. So what I should be able to do now is I should be able to spin. And we notice that my axle is way too fast. So what we have to do is we're going to create a motion link, meaning as one joint does something, we want another joint to do something else. But remember, there are two components in this joint now. So when I click on it, we're going to click link as same joint. And that causes it to spin and slide at the same time. All right. So we know so it's going way fast, and that is OK. So that distance we want it to go, if I put, type in one inch, we notice that for one spin, it goes 360, or for one inch in sliding, it goes a full 360 spin. That's way too much. We need to look back at that coarse, that coarse thread thickness. That's 16 threads per inch, or 1 16th of an inch. But you can't type that in. So you have to type it in as a decimal, so 0 0.0625. And that looks a little bit better. We're going to go ahead and click OK here. And now we notice is that as I spin this, since my threads are the appropriate size, um, as it spins one revolution, it only goes 1 16th of an inch sliding. There is one other problem. What happens if I rotate to the right? My handle starts going through that body. And so we're just going to solve this real easy by making a foot. You can either make your axle longer or making a foot on your clamp. So I'm going to go ahead and just add a foot to this clamp. And I'm going to go ahead and deactivate that body real quick. Let's get a circle on the end of this to be a half inch, finish that sketch, reactivate that body, we're going to extrude this on out to be flush with the other side of the clamp. That looks okay. Let's flare it out just a little bit because that's how clamps work. They usually have a flared base for stability purposes. Now what I'm going to do here I'm going to try something I haven't actually tried yet before. Instead of a join here, I'm going to create this as a new component. Click OK. And now what I should be able to do is I can move this around. The reason being is that I want to create some sort of constraint in Fusion that we don't want that foot peg to go through your clamp. So what I'm going to do is just move this out of the way. And we're going to go ahead and just capture that position just so that it's out of my way. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to join the center of my axle to the center of that foot. Right, let's, 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 let's do that the other way around. Let's join the center of that foot to the center of that axle. And that's going to be a rigid constraint. Click OK. And then we are looking good, folks. As I rotate this to the left, my clamp goes outwards. Beautiful. We're going to keep on going. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to call that foot. 
is we're going to create a contact set. So we're going to enable contact sets. And what I'm going to do here is create a new contact set. I don't want this clamp body to interact with or to go through the foot of my, my axle. So that way I should not be able to turn right, but I can now turn left. And then I can also now turn right. All right, so that looks okay. Now, does this work as expected? As I go to the left, it comes out. As I go to the right, it goes in, but then stops when it's fully clamped. Looks good, ladies and gentlemen. All right, that's what I'm gonna call it for this video. If you have any questions or comments, concerns, you want me to do something interesting, I'll try my best. But using a one joint for a cylindrical and then one joint for a rigid, we are able to get a working clamp in order. Alrighty guys, if you like these videos, feel free to like and subscribe, and I will see you on the next video. Take care.